bless you. Those of you who are joining us today, as we are about to enter the divine part of this stream, this is a rhema word, a word that has been established not only to transform our thinking, but God gave me a word that I want to minister to you today that is going to change and reshape the way you think about truth. And wherever you're watching me from, let's start here. Let's get more people onto this stream so that they can be blessed by what's about to be shared on this particular stream. When I got this word last night concerning the, the falsehood and the spirit of lying that has taken over the body of Christ in certain spaces, that has taken over the individual places of certain people's lives, that has taken over children, that has taken over business people, that has taken over a lot of people. God said, son, I want you to go and minister my word when it comes to truthfulness. God is reshaping our thinking today and wants us to go out of falsehood. God wants us to move out of shaping our lives through lying. Lying is not an attribute of God. Lying is not an attribute of the kingdom of God. There are two kingdoms on this planet that are very fierce. And there's the kingdom of God and there's the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness operates through lying. The kingdom of God operates through truthfulness. And that is what we want to enrich today in your lives and show you the damage that lying can do towards your life and show you the damage that walking in untruthfulness and falsehood can do to your life. You don't have to live a life of lying. Even if you want to excel in business, excel in your marriage, you don't have to live a life of lying. Lying is what people of the kingdom of darkness do in order to get ahead falsehood is not good for you as a child of God. So wherever you're watching from, before I enter this rhema word, I want you to share this stream on your WhatsApp statuses. I want you to share this stream everywhere that you can so that we can get people to be able to listen to this particular rhema word. And we're going to start here today. Before I start, let me just start off by praying. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you that we are seated here today, Father, about to enter the word that you have given me. May every ear that has an ability to listen, Father, be able to hear the word that's going to be shared today. And I want to take my, my first reading from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18, and we're going to read verse 21 up until 22. And if you're there, say amen or type amen. And we're going to learn about how lying is destroying people's lives. And, and this source of lying has shown so much problems in people and especially marriages. Have you ever seen how many husbands lie to their wives? How many wives lie to their husbands? How many people have entered marriages through lying? How many people have, you know, I know, I remember this one lady which I'm going to share about, she had done six abortions in her life because she was very vile in fornic fornicating. And what happened to her is that when it was time for her to get married, she found a man that loved her, that appreciated her, that really had value in her. But the problem was this. She was not honest concerning her union. She had done so much abortions, her womb could not carry a child any longer. What happened was that when she got married, every time the husband, they were trying to make a child, the child could not come. She prayed, she fasted over it, but God did not want to change anything until she became honest with the husband. One day, the husband came across one of the church elders where she was once, you know, confronted concerning the matter. And they said, no, the reason why you are where you are is because you've not been honest with your husband that you had six abortions in your life. The minute she went and became honest with the husband, the Lord repaired and opened up her womb. Sometimes God is waiting for your honesty. Sometimes God is, is waiting for you to become clear concerning that lie that you have been telling people. You know, God oftentimes does not move in people's lives until they become honest. Let me show you something here today about honesty that I'm going to start off with that we are reading in Second Chronicles. 
And if you're there with me, say amen, because I want you to read through with me. And it says here, and he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of thy prophets. Listen to me. The focus here is not what God agreed or what he approved or what he allowed or what he let loose. The Bible tells us that there is a spirit called a lying spirit. Its work is to move in falsehood. Do you know how many people on the planet today are living in falsehood because of a lying spirit? Do you know how many people seem to be successful in marriages because of a lying spirit? Do you know how many people seem to be successful in their businesses because of a lying spirit? Do you know how many people seem successful today in any area of their life simply because they are lying to people? And God is saying, I am coming to a place where I am not going to participate in people who literally and fully and willfully know that they're delving in lying. Lying has destroyed marriages and families to such a degree that they are unrestorable because until the truth comes out, it's not going to change or shape anything. Look at this with me. In the book of and I want to build this more on this because if we don't build more on this, we're not going to learn today. I want to read Proverbs 24, 28 and listen to what Proverbs 24, 28 says. It says, do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause and do not deceive with your lips. When, when God opened up this thing to me, he said, you know, Rick, there's a lot of people even on pulpits that are deceiving my people. There are a lot of people that are even heading households that are deceiving people. There are a lot of people on the planet today that their only work is to work deception. And now the Bible is telling us that you must not walk in deceiving people with your lips. Now, let, let, me, let me put this together to you nicely. I'm going I'm to read a very interesting chapter in Jeremiah chapter 5. And we're going to take it from verse 27. And you're going to learn something there that I think is going to build on this matter that God is saying. And remember, when God has given a rhema word, only the hungry listen. Only the teachable listen. Only the prideful look for what they want to hear. But you will one day come across a liar of note that is pathological in their way. And you will be surprised at the certain things that you're going to experience in your life simply because you've come across a liar in your life. Now look at what Jeremiah uh, uh, chapter 5 verse 27 says. As a cage is full of birds, so their houses are full of deceit. You, 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 you can't get anywhere in life properly with God when deceit is your mission and it's your way of prospering in life. This is one of the reasons why God is not answering the prayers of many people. Because they do not operate in truthfulness. You know, there are people today who are praying, praying strongly in their lives, but they're not seeing God do anything. And that's because the lying spirit has taken over. Look at this. Then it says that, therefore, they have become great and they grow rich. They grow rich. So there are people who are growing rich because of deception. They lie to their clients. They lie to their friends. They lie to their sisters. They lie to business partners. They steal from business partners. The Bible is telling you that there are people who are growing rich because of lying. It's not everybody you see on the planet that looks financially well that is operating in truthfulness. There are people that you look at them, you envy them, but you don't know what their source of wealth is. You don't know what their source of money is. And therefore, you think you can match their life. And there are people that are just becoming rich instantly like popcorns. They're just popping up out of everywhere. And this is not saying God does not want you wealthy. No, God wants you wealthy, but he wants to do it the righteous and the honest way. But there are somehow people that are thriving in life that you look up to, that you are learning from, but you don't know whether they are operating in the truth or whether they are operating in lies at all. And we are seeing today that there are people who are growing rich because of lying. And this is not a popular message, by the way. 
This is not a popular, popular feeding that people want to hear. No, people, so long as they can get money into their pockets, so long as they can grow rich, we don't care what God thinks. We don't care how God looks at us. We are willing to walk in deception for the sake of that momentary gain. And God is saying, the more you walk in that, the more you're going to see me dissipate from your life. The more you're going to see me not operating in your life. And this is a, a, a strong voice to narcissists as well. This is a strong voice to people who are, you know, men that are cheating on their wives, women that are cheating on their husbands, who have planned out a full route to lie. That's why you got that password on your phone. That's why you got, you got that password on your laptop. That's why you got that password that is sitting literally almost everywhere. To the point where she, he or she does not even know when you pass on how they literally going to retrieve information. You know, lying has caused people to become so deaf to the truth that the minute the truth is mentioned, they, are, they just shake, they just jiggle, they just, you know, jump around. Why? Because they do not know the truth and they do not even know the feeling of walking in the truth. And God is saying, you cannot grow to become rich through deception. Because that wealth is going to dwindle away. That wealth is going to disappear. But imagine you have a reputation of being truthful in your life. You've got a reputation of being honest in your life. You've got a reputation of being somebody who stands in the truth. You don't know how many couples I've counseled in my life who don't want to walk in the truth at all. Who don't want to accept the truth at all. It is truthful that you don't treat your husband well. It is truthful that you don't treat your wife well. It is truthful that you don't support your wife. It is truthful that you don't support your husband. It is truthful that in-laws are destroying your marriage. It is truthful there are many truths out there that we don't want to accept because we feel that if we accept that, it will diminish the value of who we are. The more we become truthful, the more we become high-value people in the kingdom of God. But the Bible here in Jeremiah 5 is telling us that there are people who grow rich through falsehood. Look at verse 28. And it says that they have grown fat. They are slick. Yes, they surpass the deeds of the wicked. They do not plead the cause in verse 28. The cause of the fatherless, the Bible says, yet they prosper. There are people, when you sit down there, you look at some businesswoman and you look at some businessman and you're saying, you know what? I want to be like that person. I want to follow that person. I want that person to be an example to me. But yet you don't know that yesterday they were lying in order to gain business. Yet you don't know yesterday that they were lying to their wife going out there and sleeping around. You don't know that yesterday they were busy probably, you know, enchanting or following a spirit that you don't even know what it's about. And that's why the Bible doesn't tell us to imitate anything else but to imitate Christ. We are seeing a lot of falsehood even on social media. People are living in so much falsehood that when you look at the life that's on Instagram and you look at the life that's on Facebook and you look at the life that's on all these platforms, you will be so sold that the person is living like that, but you, you will not know and understand that is a life of deception. And we are so taken away by this deceptive life that when we look at it online, we even start to look at our husbands and look at our wives and say, we want them to be like that, but we don't know the amount of falsehood that's taking place. Look at this with me. Then the Bible says here, and the right of the needy, they do not defend. They do not defend at all. And, and I, I want to take this further. In Jeremiah 5, I'm going to take you to verse 30 up until 31, and I'm going to build on this. And I told you that today's message is not a popular one. You know, it's not a message that, that those who want to continue in their falsehood are going to listen to. Those who want to continue in their lying spirit are going to literally just ignore this and pass. But those who want to change their life, who want to see God working more in their lives, they're going to accept that a life of truthfulness is a life that is great. Now look at this, Jeremiah Chapter 5, verse 30 to 31, it says here, An astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. You know, the Bible is telling us that, that, that it doesn't say that these are just human beings. No, the Bible says that prophets can even prophesy falsely. 
You know, I see a lot of people who come online and when they're looking for counseling from me, they'll literally sit down and say, you know what, Rick? They'll ask you, are you a prophet? They, 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 because they're looking for, and their ears are just itching for a, 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 a prophecy that I can just give. Even if I come to them and I say, God is going to prosper you tomorrow. Even if I'm lying, some people are going to be willing to believe that. Let me tell you something today. A pastor is not the ultimate in the kingdom of God. An apostle is not the ultimate in the kingdom of God. A prophet is not the ultimate in the kingdom of God. What is the ultimate in the kingdom of God is a person that walks in truthfulness. Look at this. Then it says here that the prophets prophesy falsely. And there are genuine prophets out there. Don't get me wrong. There are genuine, wonderful, loving, high-flying prophets of God out there that the minute they stand on the pulpit or they stand on the streets, on the corner, on the byways, on the highways, they're going to minister a prophetic word like never before have you heard. There are genuine men of God out there. But there are also false ones. There you are, you've been hearing prophecies about you're going to get married. You've been hearing them for the past five years. Now you are even 60 and you've never been married in your life. And yet you are still attending that church. Yet you are still following that particular man or woman of God. But yet you have been lied to all your life. You are told that you're going to buy a car this year and you just believe it and say, oh, that's a, a Rick is a prophet of doom today. No, I'm saying walk in truthfulness. Avoid falsehood. Allow God to be the source of the truth in your life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You cannot be a person that is led by the Spirit of God that sits down and allows falsehood to run your life. That's why you're getting many people today talking about, I want nothing to do with the church. I want nothing to do with God. Is the salvation of Jesus so low to you that you are even willing to abandon the, the, or forsaken the assembling of believers simply because some falsehood minister somewhere decided to lie to you? Or some prophet somewhere decided to swindle you out of your money. Or some apostle somewhere decided, is your relationship with God so lost or so low in your life that you are allowing a human being to drive you away from God? Is that how low you regard God? Yes, you attended a church that was false. Yes, you attended a minister that was not right. Yes, you were duped. Yes, you were swindled out of your money. But that does not mean God is the one that did that. That does not mean God is the one that went out there and decided to lie to you. Yes, it does. it's not that God decided to do that. No, you met somebody that was willing to be crooked to your life and therefore now you want to abandon God. You can't take low the salvation of God to that level. Look at this with me. And I want to take this a little bit further. Then it says here, and the priests rule by their own power. The priests are ruling by their own power. God wants to shape your life. He wants to drive you further. He wants to take you to a great caliber in your life. He wants to drive you to greatness in your life. But he can't do it when you are just accepting any man or woman of God. He can't do it when you're just running to any direction that you see fit. He can't do it if you're not willing to accept the truth of the word of God. He can't do it if you're literally running out there conniving people and lying to people. He can't do it. God wants truthfulness in your life. He wants to build an honest living in your life. He wants to build honest businesses in your life. And he wants to build an honest relationships in your life. But he just can't do it if you're accepting falsehood. Say amen, somebody. If you're watching this and you're learning, type amen. Because we want to shape your life by the truth of God. Now, now, the Bible is telling us, and the priests rule by their own power. There are priests and power and, and, and pastors and bishops that are ruling by their own power out there. It's not the power of God. And how are you going to identify that they are ruling by that? You're only going to identify it if you accept the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you accept the truthfulness of the word of God in your life. Look at this. Then the Bible says that in Jeremiah uh, uh, 5.31, it says that, and my people love to have it so. 
Do you know that there are people that love it when a man of God is walking in his own power and not the power of God? Do you know that there are people that love it? Do you know that there are people that love it when prophets are walking in falsehood? There are people who praise that. There are people who want it. There are people who want to be part of that. There are people who want to dine in it. There are people who want to enjoy that. That's what the Bible says that, and my people love to have it so. But what will be your end? Are you going to run around and sit there and allow your hundred years that God has given you on this planet to be ruled by falsehood? You know, we are living uh, in a time where people um, try by all means to look like they are famous. They try by all means to look like they are rich. They try by all means to look like they have it all together. And God is saying, I'm not blessing that falsehood. I'm not walking in that falsehood. Let, let me show you another thing that, that, that he spoke to me here. Colossians 3.9 says something very interesting. Colossians 3.9 says that do not lie one to another. Don't do it. If you don't have some truth to speak, don't do it. Even if you are in trouble, don't walk in lies. Even if you are sitting there and people want to push you to a place of falsehood, don't accept it. Rather speak the truth and be set free by that particular truth. Do you know how much weight it is in your life to keep on carrying a lie forever? Do you know how much dragging down that does to you? You lied to get a job. You lied to get married. You lied to get a promotion. You had to tarnish someone's reputation in order to get that promotion. And you think that God is part of that blessing? You think that God is part of that increase? God is saying today, if you are in falsehood, my child, I want you to change from that walk. If you are in falsehood, my child, I want you to give up that falsehood. I want you to come to the truth of the, the knowledge of the truth. And I want you to give up walking by lying to people to get ahead. Look at this. Do not lie to one another, Colossians 3.9. Since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. It's an evil practice to walk in lying. And some people don't want to give up lying. It has become second nature to them to the point where exaggeration and lying is part of their life. They don't want to live in the truth because if they live in the truth, they know they're going to lose all those things. You know, when you start to become truthful, everything that you gained by lying starts to fall away. That car that you bought by lying will fall away. That house that you bought by will fall away. God will not work with things that are born from lies. Look at this. Exodus 23 verse 1. And, and this is a very good one that I want to share as well. It says here, you shall not bear a false report. Do not join your hand with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. Some of you are protecting your family members who have killed other people. Some of you are protecting your family members who have destroyed other people's marriages. Some of you are protecting, you know, your in-laws who are in the business of destroying your marriage. Some of you are protecting your children when you know that the only thing that can change them is being a truthful person. When you pass on as a parent and they are continuing in their lying, those particular kids, do you think that they are going to live long in that? No, they're not. It's such a shame to walk in dishonesty. That's why some people's reputations today are damaged because of falsehood. Look at this. Matthew chapter 15 verse 19. And I want us to learn. And those of you who are learning, you know, just type amen. Because I want to know that you are part of this thing. And if you can share it, share it to your WhatsApp statuses. Share it everywhere up until we get more people to learn the rhema word that God has given us today. Look at what Matthew chapter 15 verse 19 says. For out of the heart, the Bible says, comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses. False witnesses. You know, the way God wants to raise people, the only thing that's a barrier to him raising you is that lying that you're doing. 
God wants to get money into your hands. God wants to get car into your hands. God wants to get, but that pride, you know, pride causes people to lie. It's the source of this lying that's happening. You have not been honest with your husband. And God is telling you, I will fix that marriage the day you become honest with your husband. You've not been honest with your wife. And God is telling you, I'm going to fix your life when you become honest. Some of you even got divorced. You don't even know what the source of divorce is. And you find that that person does not want to become honest at all because they have been building their life on lies. And God is saying, I want to shape your life and I want to shape your thinking and I want to be so involved in your life. I want to give you blessings upon blessings in your life. But listen, my daughter, the barrier of that lying that you're doing is stopping me. It's time to come clean. It's time to come clean. Why are you having certain relationships in your life that are just causing you to become a falsehood person? It's time to come clean. Look at this that we're going to learn further here. And if you're learning, say amen. I want to know that you are part of this. Psalm 55 verse 23 says here, but you, O God, will bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of bloodshed and deceit. So people of bloodshed, people who kill, murder, they're on the same caliber as deceitful people. That's what the Bible says that men of bloodshed and deceit will not live out half of their days. They will not live out half of their days. Meaning that when you are a lying person, you will not live the fullness of your life. When you are a lying person, your life is cut short. When you are a lying person, you are not going to live up until that 80, 90 or 100 years that God has put for you. You are going to live up until 40 years. You are going to live up until 25 years. So God is saying your life can be cut short because of falsehood. Where you won't even see your great-grandchildren. Where you won't even see your grandchildren. Where you won't live to see your children graduate. But if you can abandon falsehood, if you can abandon lying, if you can abandon deceit, you are going to live a life where you are able to live the fullness of what God has put for you. Some of you are even lying in sicknesses and diseases and perils and, and, and sufferings and poverty because you don't want to give up lying. Oh man. It's time to, to say amen. It's time to say amen. I told you this is not a popular message. You know, sometimes you have to go through the hardness of life. To, to come to the place where you accept the truth that I'm giving you today. You know, there are people who are literally fashioning right now how they're going to lie to that investor tomorrow. There are people right now who are fashioning, what am I going to tell my wife tomorrow when I get back after this cheating that I've done? And God is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Become honest. Become a person who tells the truth. Look at this. I'm, I'm going to share something even much stronger with you. So, so in, Isaiah, in, in Psalm 55, I told you that the Bible tells us that, but you, O God, will bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of bloodshed and deceit will not live half of their days. Don't be surprised when people die young. Don't be surprised when people die without even fulfilling their purposes. Sometimes in other people's lives that you are seeing, you don't know how much lying they're doing. You don't know how much falsehood they're walking in. And therefore you find they go to the grave earlier than they're supposed to because the, the lying is even cutting the shortness of their lives. You know, God is teaching me today, there are some people that you ought not to be crying for. Because God keeps telling them, I need you to be honest. I need you to, to you know, pride is so powerful, man. That when somebody is advising you the truth, you will even find ways to lie to make sure that that person does not come to the knowledge of the truth. Have you ever noticed in life how angry people get when you start to share with them the truth? Have you ever noticed how angry people who are falsehood based become when you start to find out the truth of the lies that they are busy developing? Look at how angry they become. That is because they have determined in their lives that they are not going to walk in the truth. It's true you married wrong. It's true. It's true that that husband that you had, you married wrong. 
It's true that the wife that you had, you married wrong. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say every marriage is from heaven. I'm not going to sit here and tell everybody and say, you know what, every relationship that you got there is because of God's divine connection. Do you know that the devil can even work out some things in your life where you find yourself being in a relationship that is literally killing the life out of you? It's not every marriage that is born from God. There you are, you married a swindler. A swindler is a liar, is somebody that lies to get you to the position where they want you to be. There you are as a woman, you are dating a swindler. You don't even know what to do with this swindler. Swindlers are masterminds of lying. They are actually narcissists at heart. Swindlers are people that are willing to take you for a ride up until they get what they can get from you. Swindlers, their main purpose is mammon. They just want money from you. There you are. You are in a relationship. You are a woman. You are paying for this. You are rescuing his business. You are rescuing all these types of things. And six months into that relationship, you are indebted because you met a liar of note. Oh man, none of you are shouting amen when I'm telling you about swindlers today. I'm telling you how powerful swindlers are. They camp in your life as a woman. They sit there. They are willing to settle with you. You take out your credit card. You take out your check card. You give it to them. And what happens to you six years down the line? You are so indebted, you can't even pay those debts. Some women even commit suicide when they realize that, listen, I can't, I can't, I can't win. There are people who are divine swindlers. Children of the kingdom of darkness. Their life is to lie. You even get scammers. Scammers who are designed to make sure that they walk in falsehood. To solicit you out of your money. To solicit you out of your life. The life of the 419 individuals. 419 women. 419 men. Built on the very fiber of who Satan is. Lying all their lives to make sure that they can defeat you. Man, I'm preaching better than you say amen. I told you a lot of people are not going to like this. Because when you talk about something that people are doing, they are not willing to accept. You know that a liar can, can lie to the point where they believe even their own lies. Where that lie becomes truth to them even when it's a lie. Imagine such an imprint in your mind. Look at this. I'm going to build further on this. And if you're enjoying this, say amen. We know that we are on the same place. Look at Revelations chapter 21 verse 8. And we're going to build on this. And it says here, But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderous and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Look at that. Revelations 21 8. And all liars. The Bible says that their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, one of the things I've noticed as I'm checking this, I, I want to make sure that I'm sitting on the right pedestal here. The, the word second death, people think hell is the ultimate. <laughs> and hell is not the ultimate at all. Matter of fact, the, the hell and death are going to be wrapped up in one place and thrown into the lake. They're going to be thrown into what we call the second death. They're going to be thrown into what we call the lake of fire. So if you think hell is the ultimate, no. Hell is where people are stored who have chosen not to walk with Jesus Christ. And hell is real. Let me tell you that today. Literally sitting on the crust of the earth. Hell is real. But the Bible says uh, liars will not go into the life of the afterlife. They won't make it. And that's why I say that today's message is not popular because liars are not going to make it anywhere and say, no, don't you have sin in your life? No, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am redeemed. I'm the righteousness of God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm a repentant soul and I'm, truthing to, I'm choosing to walk in the truthfulness of the word of God. But the Bible here tells us that liars are not going to settle anywhere in the kingdom of God. And if you're a person that constantly lies, that constantly does not tell the truth, uh, constantly shaping, then there's a high chance you are not a child of God at all. You say, I thought this pastor is going to talk about marriage. No, I need to talk about what God is telling me today. That marriage of yours is falling apart because you don't want to be truthful to your wife. 
That marriage of yours is falling apart because you don't want to be truthful to your husband that you are a prideful, arrogant, lying person that does not want to see the truth prevailing in your marriage as a husband. And yet when we tell you these things, you are willing to scheme and because when pride takes over your heart, you, the truth will never come out. The, that's why Satan, even till today, will never come to a place where he goes and asks an apology to the Lord. Because pride and lying combined together are a force to reckon with. Say amen, somebody. Say amen. And if you can share this with somebody, learn that lying does not build anything. Look at this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. And I want us to read it together. And if you're there with me, say amen. Type amen on your phones. Tell me how this is shaping your life. I know some of you are sitting there saying that, nah, I'm not going to type that, uh, that I was a liar. I'm not going to type that I've been lying all my life. No, once you expose this thing, the truth comes out. The truth is what will shape your life. Look at Proverbs 12, 22. It says here, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. Can you imagine God delighted in you because you're a truthful person? But when you're a lying person, you're not going to make it. The Bible says it's on the degree of an abomination. Lying lips. The lips, you know, when that, you know there are some people in, in life that lie so much that even when they're standing with you and they're telling you a story, you all of a sudden feel that, yeah, this person's lying. They lied about this. They lied about that. They lied about this. They just got so much stories that lying is their thing. And I'm speaking to you today. When are you going to stop that lying? When are you going to go and open up to the fact that you are busy with somebody else's husband? You are busy with somebody else's wife. You are busy with your best friend's husband. You are busy with your best friend's wife. When are you going to open up about that? When are you going to sit down and tell the truth concerning that? That you are committing infidelity or you're assisting somebody to do infidelity. And I told you, it's not a popular message. But these things must be spoken. These truths must be released out there. Mm. Man, as I'm, I'm, I'm even uh, uh, seeing some comments coming up here, uh, I like what uh, um, uh, Pamela says here. Pamela Peacock, she says, I just spoke to my grandchildren about lying. This is a confirmation. It's a confirmation. This is what God has been telling me, Pamela. As you're watching online, God has been literally putting this in my heart. And I, I see um, uh, Liratu here. She's saying, and one cannot keep up with lies. That's true. There are people, Lirato, who cannot keep up with lying. And you know, when, when, when people who lie, <laughs> what I've noticed about people who lie is they lie so much, they even forget their lies and then they have to make other lies in order to make those lies that they made before look and seem correct to you. Especially when you are dating a swindler and you, and you know, or you're married to a swindler. One lie after the next, one lie after the other. I like, I like, I like what uh, uh, Chirizi says here. Amen. Yes, that's what we're going to say. Because it's the truth that we need to start walking in the honesty and integrity of life. Do you know that's why some people can't build businesses? Because they are determined to start lying. You don't have to look big in front of people. Just be honest. Just be honest that you are not as rich as you look. Just be honest that you are not as moneyed as people. You want people to make you look. Just be honest with people. And God will start to raise you up. When you are an honest person. And God will raise you up and build you up. And that's what we are looking at. You know, let's, let's build up more on this. If you're enjoying this, say amen. Oh, I like what, what um, uh, Adun, Aduni is saying. And she says, yeah, next week it's a different story. It's the truth. You know, lying people will always make sure that their stories keep changing. Because falsehood is part of the fiber of their skin. They need to become Born again people. They need to become people that accept Jesus Christ as, the, as their Lord and their Savior. Because the more they continue in that, do you know that there are people who will lie till they go six feet under lying? That even when you reach the coffin and you're looking at them and say, brother, why didn't you just tell the truth from the start? Sister, why didn't you just tell the truth from the beginning? Look at this uh, in um, Acts chapter 5 verse 3. And Acts chapter 5 verse 3. And, and I'm going to read it and it says here. But Peter said, Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Imagine, you know, there's an infilling of the Holy Ghost, but there's also an infilling of Satan where he fills your heart. Imagine that, that, that these Ananias and Zafira, by the way, they, they were born again because the Bible says that they were part of the people who gave their life to Christ, but the Bible says they were filled by Satan to lie. When you did that lie of yours, what, what were you filled by? And say, no, it's just my own mind. No, you cannot lie without the devil becoming a part of your life. You are inviting the devil in your life when you lie. You are inviting his works in your life when you lie. You are inviting his influence when you sit down there and you lie. Just become honest with your life. I told you it's not a popular message. Somebody is still thinking, should I type amen? Should I sit down and... No, no, no. The Bible says that, but Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? Why have you lied? And the Bible says they tried to explain, but the, the apostles say that you have not lied to me, but have lied to the Holy Ghost. You know, some of you don't even realize that when you are speaking to some people, you are speaking to the Holy Ghost. And you're starting to kill certain things in your life. You're killing that promotion in your life. You are killing that job in your life. You are killing that opportunity that you could have been getting in your life. But that lying keeps stopping God from doing certain things in your life. And you don't understand how it is killing your life, that lying. That's why the Bible says when Ananias and Zafira came there, the Bible says they dropped dead. Dropped dead. They couldn't breathe anymore. They were lifeless because of lying. What has become lifeless in your life because of lying? What has become, and, and, and you know, I, I, I counsel a lot of people. And one of the things I realized is that there are even men in different countries who are even willing to lie to women who are honest with them concerning relationships. Ah, oh, man, I'm preaching better than you say amen. I, I need us to flow together in this. I need us to flow together in this. Now look at this. I said something. Uh, I'm going to talk about the blessing of being honest. Look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. And uh, I'm going to read it out here. And if you say there, say amen. You know, I can see you all here, you know, joining me and being part of this. I can see Belinda Cardwell. She's online. I can see Dev MC. She's, that person's online. I can see a person called Sun, Sun Kutu is also watching. I see a person called Afenu. They are also watching. Thank you for joining but here's the word for today. One must stop lying. Now I say, Pastor Rick, but because I just joined, now you're saying I must stop lying. No, <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to other person who just joined. That lying needs to become a thing of the past. Look at this. Proverbs 12, 22. The Lord hates or detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. People who are trustworthy. Do you know how difficult it is in life today to find people that are honest? Do you know how difficult it is today to find a husband that is honest? Do you know how difficult it is today to find a wife that is honest? Very difficult item. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. That's how difficult it is to find honest people in our planet today. People who become so truthful and say, you know what? I, I love the truth. No, no, you're not going to find such people. They're difficult. They're rare. They are a commodity that you just can't get anywhere. Now, you might be that truthful person that God keeps talking about, that God wants to use, that God wants to enhance his kingdom. Have you ever seen how broke people are on the planet today? So moneyless. Lying on their CVs to get a job. Yeah, just do this CV for me. Yeah, just put in this stuff. You put other people's numbers as references that are not supposed to be there. And you think God is blessing you to have that job? And you're sitting down there and you say, no, I got this job out of falsehood? And you think God is part of it? Cannot be. Look at this. Let's build on further on this. And I want us to, to, to finish up on a good note today. Luke chapter 16 Verse 10, and look at what it says. 
whoever, it says that whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. And that's, that, that's my translation as well there. Little lies develop into big things. Little lies develop into big things. You just start off with, what do you call them? They call them white lies. You just start off with little white lies. From little white lies develops to something else. And then becomes a mountain. You, becoming, you become a serial liar from there. A one that even when it's time for God to try and work with you, you are literally sitting on the devil's seat. Now, I'm not talking to you who's watching. I'm talking to the one who's not watching. Look at this. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. I've been telling people about tithing, offering and giving, and, you know, finance, kingdom financiers and all those types of things. You know, I've been telling people, that, you know, when you want to start the culture of giving in God's house, the culture of tithing, the culture of offering, start small. Start when you are still small. Because when you start to earn millions, there is no way people are going to give to God's house when they couldn't do it, when, they were, when, when the money was still little. Whenever you start lying, just even a white lie, you're going to develop into something else. And when you become that something else, it's going to be very dangerous for you. Remember what I said? People who lie cut their life short. People who lie do not go far. Say amen, somebody, as I'm watching this. Look at this. I want to build more on this. And we're going to take Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. And we're going to read this together. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. But he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. That lie that you are producing, one day you are going to be caught, I'm telling you. One day you are going to be shamed that you're a liar. One day you're going to be sitting there and you know, when you catch a liar, you know, a liar is a person who, they try to hide everything. You know, they're very secretive in their ways. But the Bible is telling us that one day you're going to be caught out. And when you are caught out, what are you going to do? Are you going to commit suicide? Are you going to sit down now and try to cook up another lie? No. The Bible is telling us that when a liar is caught out, oh man, dangerous place to be. Just be honest from the start. Have you ever seen how many celebrities have destroyed their reputation when they started off in honesty, then they become liars and their reputation becomes destroyed? And I'm telling you today, you want to build your life today, become a person of securedness. That people can trust. People can walk with. But when you become a liar, people don't want to walk with you. You'll even notice sometimes né, people can smell an aroma of, of lying. Where they don't, they don't want to spend time with you anymore. Somehow they just grab. You know what I like about God? When you're an honest pe person, he's going to push dishonest people away from you. He's going to push them away. And this is what I'm talking about. When you are a truthful, earnest person, you are going to go far. You're going to reach a place where you're good. And I, I want to read a, a very interesting verse uh, in John chapter 8, verse 44. And we're going to learn something there. And if you're there online, say amen. Now I see uh, Priscilla is online. I see Samantha's online. And, I, I, and, and I'm, I'm seeing other Joseph is online. Josephine, Josephine is online as well. Fortune is online as well. And, and I thank Olivia, Giramia, thank you for the word that you have given over there. And, and when you are online, I, I, I get so blessed because I know that I'm speaking to people who are learning something. I can see here, Marlene Pierre is online as well. Uh, um, Lerato Nkosi, one of our church members, is also online as well. And God bless you for, for learning this. When you finish with this, guys, go and share it with people. Look at John 8, 44. And I'm going to say something here very interesting. The Bible says that for you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning, a hater of truth. Do you know that there are people, they just hate the truth. They don't want anything to do with the truth. And the Bible says that there is, there is not an iota of truth in him. 
When he lies, it is perfectly normal. There are some people that lying to them is a normal attitude. It's a normality of life. There are some people that lying feels like it's part of their bloodline. That's who they are. Imagine you are married to such a liar. Imagine if your wife is such a liar. Your husband is such a liar. Imagine if your kids are such a liar. To the point where when they lie, it's normal to them. It's, 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 so, it's so natural to them that telling the truth makes them uncomfortable. The Bible says here, a hater of truth. That's why when we do marriage counseling, we've seen something uh, very unique in marriage counseling. There are people who, no matter what truth you speak to them, they will come to counseling to you and then go to another pastor for counseling and move to another pastor for counseling up until they find a pastor that agrees with them. That's how liars operate. Liars operate, they find people that agree with them and walk with those particular people. Say amen, somebody. This is the truth. This is the truth. And, and, I, and I like here what Nkensan is saying. May God help us to always tell the truth. We mustn't become serial liars. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. People have entered so much falsehood. You meet a man today. He tells you all this nice information. It wows you and tickles your ears. And then six months down the line, you're like, eh, is this the man that was speaking to me before? The behavior has changed. It becomes something else. Some people can hide their true character for months. Some can even do it for years. When you marry them, you realize, hey, this person is not as clean as they, they, they say they were. 15 years down the line, you start to see attributes you've never seen in your life. Why? Because you married a camper. That's what I call them. They are willing to camp there and be in falsehood till the day that you find them out. Look at this. The Bible says that for he is the father of liars. The Bible says that Satan is the father of liars. Who is your Lord today? Is it Satan? Is it Jesus Christ? Your actions will tell us who is your Lord today. Your actions will minister to us who is your master today. If your master is Satan, you will continue lying to people for the rest of your life. You will spend eternity with him. But when you are a child of Jesus, when you are a child of God, you will be a person of integrity and truth and honesty. And no matter what the devil brings your way, you will be a securely protected person. Like I told you here, the Bible says that the prophets prophesy falsely. And I told you, there are prophets that are genuine ministers of God, but they are ones that prophesy falsely. Any prophet of God that comes to you today and tells you something that never comes to pass, listen to me carefully, you who's watching online. Walk away from that church. Walk away. Do you know that a lie can destroy your family? Do you know that there are some prophets, some pastors, some bishops who have destroyed marriages because of lying to people? And I'm telling you today, the minute you see falsehood, walk away. Don't settle in that place. And look at this. I'm, I'm, I want to build in uh, uh, Jeremiah. And I want to uh, go to Jeremiah chapter 6. And we're going to take it from verse 13. And we're going to read something there. I like, I like what Merlin says here. My husband hates when he is presented with the truth and tries to turn the situation to make me look like I am guilty. I am sick of it. Let me tell you, Merlin, from experience, a person who, when you speak the truth, they begin to use reverse psychology towards you are the attributes of a narcissist. People just have never seen it. Do you know that a narcissist is a medical condition? People don't know that. That they, that they think that some of these things that they're coming, that's why I, I once taught a message and I said that some of you have married med medical cases and you don't realize it. And some of these people need medical help. And, and, and the more we walk believing that they are just doing it by themselves or they are human or some of them know what they're doing. But some people are medical cases. You know, I, I, I like what uh, 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 Cindy said here. 
Let integrity, truth, and honesty be my portion always. Listen to that. Some praise here. But now, Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13 says something very interesting here. Yeah? It says here, because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Then the Bible says here, and from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. Everyone deals falsely. It's not me that's saying it. It's the very Bible that I'm reading here. It's sitting right here. That there are people that deal falsely. Literally. And the Bible is telling you that there are prophets and priests. And let me, let me put it even better. Husbands and wives and parents that deal falsely. Friends and businessmen and colleagues that deal falsely. So the Bible says here that... that that they deal so falsely. And you know what? I, I want to build more on this. If you look at, let, let's read verse 14 of that Jeremiah um, uh, chapter 6. And I want to show you something very interesting here. Because you, some of you are going to understand why you are where you are. You know, and I know many people, they want a word in their life. They want a word that will change their lives. But let me show you something very interesting. Jeremiah 6, 14. And read it with me. Read it with me. Look, look what it says. They have also healed the hurt of my people slightly. Saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. I imagine, people are coming to you and say prosperity is coming your way. Healing is coming your way. Peace is coming your way. And the Bible is telling us here that when there is no peace. <laughs> I remember in uh, 2020, um, uh, just on the January... Um, uh, actually, the December of, of, of 2019, people started saying, hey, you know what, um, uh, there's a pandemic coming, a heavy pandemic. People didn't believe. That 31st January, uh, sorry, 31st of December, people were prophesying, it's going to be a year of prosperity. It's going to be a year of divine connection. You know, people do these visions beginning of the year. It's going to be a year of power. It's going to be a year of this. And you saw lockdown come in in February. People's houses got sold. People's cars got repossessed. People lost their fathers, their mothers, their wives, their husbands, and their kids because of pandemic. What happened to that word of prosperity? What happened to that word of, of it's going to be a year of excelling? It's going to be a year of promotion, yet that company that you're working for closed down. And yet you are still attending that church. And yet you are still following that woman of God. And yet you are still following that man of God. You need to start loving the truth. You need to start walking in the truth. People came that particular year. Some had the toughest hardship. Some are still even trying to recover today. But 2020 they were told, God's going to make you a millionaire. God's going to make you a thousandaire. God's going to make you a billionaire. Where are those words today? Where are those words? I'm not cursing people, but I'm saying you got to go back and look at what is being said. God told me that you are going to be, you know, having eight cars next year. And that this year you are still having two cars or even one car. Some are probably even still walking. Because lies have permeated the body of Christ. And many people are just believing these lies without even going and testing the spirit, without even going and sitting down and looking into this particular one. I like, I like, I like, what, some of, I like what Cindy says. Some of us got retrenched. Some people, 2020, they were seeing, you know, they were having letters. We're not going to pay you the salaries that wanted to pay you. And you're sitting down and you're saying, but it's my year. Some people even prayed and fasted in that 2020 year, saying the word that has been spoken by the man of God, let it take shape and form. And then you just saw a letter coming. We are going to have to close the company. But some ministers sat down and said, guys, COVID is coming. Lockdown is coming. Start to gather your harvest and put it away. Start to put your safety. Some people were even being warned in 2019 mid-year that there is a lockdown that is coming. And what did people do? They looked at those prophets and they said, ah, these are prophets of doom. 
these prophets are not going to give us anything in our life. You know what? Let me go to a one that tells me that tomorrow I'm going to buy a car. Let me go to a bishop that tells me tomorrow I'm going to be, you know, uh, uh, getting married. But here you are, four years later, you are still not married. And yet you are still attending that church. Yet you are still attending that particular place. And yet you are still sitting down listening to those messages when falsehood was given to you. So the Bible says in Jeremiah 6.14, they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. It's not every word that you must take today from any minister. The Holy Spirit lives in the inside of all of us. Why are you just accepting falsehood in your life? Why are you just accepting lies in your life? And this is the problem that many people are walking in. The fact that they have been told lies. Some of you even wrote the prophecies down. Oh yes, in 2024, I'm going to be a billionaire. But yet, you don't even have a cent in your account even till today. I say, but Rick, you're just cursing. No, no, I'm saying be honest in your walk with God. Let him drive your life. Stop allowing prophetic words that don't even resemble in your spirit and what the Holy Ghost is saying to run your life. The lies that are running people's lives are too much and God is saying, I have grown tired of people accepting lies and believing that it is me. I have not sent some of what these people are saying. Look at this. And we're going to build on this. I want to Take Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. And, and read it with me. Don't, don't just, you know, uh, uh, come in. Patricia, thank you for saying amen. I see other people there inside as well. Uh, Dev Mike, I stay away from prosperity preaching and listen to the preaching that it hits in my past. Listen to that. God does want us to prosper. But in truthfulness, not lying. How many people were told in the past, if you sold 10,000 rand, if you sold $10,000, if you sold $50,000, God is going to raise you. But in your spirit, you know you're uncomfortable about that decision. In your spirit, you know you are not sitting well about that decision. And yet you are still going out there busy being swindled out of. I'm not saying don't give. And I'm not saying don't tithe. I'm not saying don't go and empower God's house. But I'm saying do it because of revelation. Do it because God is leading you. And he's guiding you. And he is your source of truth. Don't do it because somebody wants to swindle you. And then after that go out there and buy a Mercedes Benz. And go out there and buy a BMW. No, I'm saying do it because God is leading you. Look at this, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. It says here, Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is. The old paths. What are the old paths? The old paths is that we must walk in the truthfulness of God. You know, new doctrines are just arising out of anywhere. I found a revelation that God has given me. The revelation is raw. No, go and read the word of God and set yourself free from the falsehoods that are happening out there. That's why the Bible says that go and seek the old paths. And the Bible says here, where the good way is and walk in it, then you will find rest for your souls. Do you know why some of you are so restless, so troubled, so depressed, so sad is because there is no truth that's surviving. You know, when a lie hits your life ne? and you have to sit down there and walk in that lie and you can see that this is a lie, you will get depressed when you start to see those things. Look at this. But they said, we will not walk in it. There are people who don't love the truth of the word of God. No, they, they just don't love it. There are people who want to hear falsehood. There are people who love falsehood. It's, their, it's, it's just their want. They just want it. They don't want the truth. But you who is watching, who is blessed by this, who is empowered by this, who wants to make sure that you live a life of honesty and integrity, 
God's about to do mighty and powerful stuff in your life because God does things in the lives of people who are honest and genuine. Just because somebody got a car does not mean they got blessed with a car. There's still common grace on this planet where if you work hard, you can go and buy a car. Oh, somebody say amen as I'm busy with this. Say amen. Look at, look at what Jeremiah 6.17 says. And it says here, also, I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. You know, we can preach the truth every day of our lives, but there are people that want nothing to do with the truth. You know, I, I was told by this other pastor this one time, and he said to me, Rick, churches where they don't play in the truth are very big. Churches where they play in the truth are very small. And I said, now, nah, you, 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 you got to find a way to make this sound true to me. And he said, you know, when I was living my life attending some of these mega churches, I didn't grow. But when I went to a small church, I started growing. And I said, no, that's not the case, man. That's not how you judge truth. How you judge truth is by comparing it with the word of God. The more you compare it with the word of God, the more you know whether it is true or not. Some of you have been living in so much lying that you don't even know what is truth anymore. You don't even know what it tastes like, what it looks like, what it feels like. You don't even know any of that. And God is saying, I want to bring you to a place where, yes, you were lying. Yes, you were living in this, but I want to change your life. And that's what God is saying to me today. He wants to bring you to a place of genuineness. And let's, let, let, let's uh, close this up with verse 19 of that Jeremiah chapter 6. Let's close this up with Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 19. And it says here, Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on you. These people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. Do you know why certain people today in their lives, they are suffering so badly? Suffering with debts, credit cards, loans, suffering with dying marriages, suffering with kids that are wayward. Su Do you know why they are suffering? They have rejected God. Let me tell you one way to know that God is not involved in your life. The more you dodge winning souls, the more you dodge church, the more you dodge ministry, the more you dodge and forsaken the building of people's lives in ministry, the more you are rejecting God. And the Bible says that when you reject God, calamity is going to come your way. That's why some of you, when troubles come, you can't get protected by God because God protects his own. God protects those that walk with him. I remember some guy online he was like saying, you know, I, I'm listening to what you're saying, Rick, but I pray and God blesses me. And I looked at him and I said, even if you pray and you get a car, it does not mean that God has blessed you with a car. Because you see, your lifestyle must match your prayer life. If you are a prayerful person, your lifestyle will show us that you're a prayerful person. But today, God is saying, walk away from dishonesty. That man that you have been lying to, go and tell him the truth. That woman that you have been lying to, go and tell her the truth. Those kids that are yours that you've been lying to, start becoming honest with them. Start telling them the truth. I was telling a couple not so long ago that was sitting down and saying, you know what? Um, um, I told him straight and I said, you know what? You have a borrowed husband. And she said, my husband is brought. I said, yes, you have a borrowed husband. Because if he's still running back to mama for advice, he's still running back to mama to decide what must be done in the household. You don't have a husband. You have a borrowed husband. You have a man that is borrowed to the household. That anytime anything goes wrong, he runs back to mama's house. And mama must then fix the union. You were not ready to leave and cleave to your wife. And there are some women out there that are so invested in their, 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 their mother and their father that they don't understand they've come under the authority of their husband, living like borrowed wives, living like as if they're going to shoot back. Whenever their husband argues with the wife, she packs up her bags and shoots back to her father's house or her mother's house. You're a borrowed person. 
But when you are a truthful person, you understand that I have now become a married person. And now I must build a household with my wife. I must build a household with my husband. But when you are borrowed, you will defend your mother. You will defend your father. You will not sit down in the truth. The truth is what sets people free. The truth of the matter is that you have stopped praying. The truth of the matter is that you have stopped studying the word of God. The truth of the matter is that you no longer see value in the house of God. The truth of the matter is that you were swindled out of money by that bishop, prophet, pastor, apostle. doesn't matter what you call them now. The truth of the matter is that you used to attend church and somebody hurt you. The truth of the matter is that you have put the relationship of church folks higher than your relationship with God. The truth of the matter is you have given up on God because of people. But the truth is that God wants you back. God wants to build you back. So listen to me carefully. Tomorrow, we are having a service in this building. At 6.30 p.m. tomorrow. S-A-S-T, we are going to be in this building praying. We are going to be in this building because we are children of God. We don't have time to lie to ourselves. Oh, I'm a child of God. You never read the word. Oh, I'm a child of God. You never pray. Oh, I'm a child of God. You don't commit your plans to the Lord. I'm a child of God. You don't do anything that consists of the child. You are just lying to yourself. A true child of God prays. A true child of God loves the word. A true child of God financially empowers the church. A true child of God loves to see the will of God prevail. But you are sitting there, oh, I'm a child of God. How long are you going to lie to yourself? How long are you going to lie? And, and I'm talking to you today. How long are you going to lie to yourself that you are a child of God when you know deep down in your heart you've never been transformed? You know deep down in your heart, God is not there. You know that deep down in your heart, all you do is mock the kingdom of God. You know deep down in your heart, you never speak well of God's house. Deep down in your heart, you know you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. Deep down in your heart, you know you are not born again. And I'm going to give you a chance today to give your life and surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you a chance to walk in the truthfulness so that when you come and pray with us tomorrow, you are praying in truthfulness. Say these words with me. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus died and rose again on the third day. I confess him as the Lord of my life. And I believe that my name is written in the book of life. If you made this prayer with me today, you just got born again. Find your way to a Bible-based church and start living in truth. People are running away from the real gospel. They are running away from the real truth of the word of God. People are even ashamed to share Jesus out there in the world. When I teach on subjects of business, people flow into the stream or they flow into the auditorium. But when I speak about Jesus the very son of the living God, the true heir, the true one that sits at the right hand of the father, they don't want to hear it. You know why? They are not children of God. And I know you say, no, you brought this. It's a rhema word. That's what God is saying to you today. I, you know, when, when, when Baal, the Bible says, Baal went before uh, um, uh, the false prophets. And the Bible says that Elijah was being looked for by, by a lady called Jezebel. She wanted to kill Elijah. And the Bible says one place Elijah ran, got down on his knees, and he said, Lord, take my life. And God said, I have 7,000 people that have not kissed the knee of Baal. Out of the whole nation of Israel, only 7,000 people plus Elijah had not worshipped the Baal. Today you have believers that are worshipping mammon, they forsake the church. They forsake God's house. They forsake attending God's house. They forsake anything that does the kingdom of God. They don't share about Jesus. They don't share anything that's of value that comes from the kingdom of God.
but yet they call themselves children of God. The Bible says that we will have sheep and goats mixed together. And on that day of judgment, the angels are going to separate those that look like they are saved. They will be separated. God wants truthfulness in this era. God wants people who walk in divine truth. He does not want people who are liars, who don't want to change their ways, who can't accept even advice. You know, a liar, when you advise a liar, a, a liar <laughs> cannot take advice, man. A liar will find ways to dodge truth. But the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. People are advising you about business in your life. People are advising you about your marriage. People are advising you about, you know, how to raise your kids. People are advising you about how to keep your home well. People are advising you about church. People are advising you about things in your life. But somehow you can never take advice. Somehow when your, when your wife comes there and she tells you that, honey, this is the way we ought to go. You, don't, you can't go that way because why? You don't like the truth. But today... May God bless you as you start walking in the truth of the word of God. Today, I'm going to make this prayer for you today. May God in your honesty usher you to a place of greatness and a place of prosperity. That when you are in your financial life, you are great. In your marital life, you are great. In your working life, you are great. May God shine his mercy upon your face. May God literally build the foundation that you are on even stronger. May God take you to great heights and promotions in your life. May God establish you in your life. Today's rhema word is that people must stop lying to build their lives. They must stop being dishonest. They must become people of integrity and honesty in their lives. Tomorrow, we are meeting here at 6.30 p.m. for prayer. And we are going to be basking in prayer. True believers are those who pray. Untrue believers do not value prayer. So tomorrow, join me at number unit 8A and B, Zelda Park, 570 Kharit Merit Street and in Pretoria North, South Africa. And come and dine with us tomorrow. And not only that, but we are coming to bask in the arena of prayer. And we're going to see the Lord do mighty and wonderful things in our lives. We're going to see God touch lives. We're going to see God reshape lives. We're going to see God transform our thinking. Because we are people of God. And no matter how much people mock us, we will continue worshipping and raising the beauty of our Father and our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to sit down there and begin just speaking any way we wish or how. The Word of God is the solid truth upon which we rest our lives. The Word of God is our source of truth. Today you've got your Word. It is time to change and become an honest person. Some of you are dodging church because you, you can't give. <laughs> you know, I was amazed the other day when people, uh, you know, this one lady said something to me in closing. <clears throat> and she said, <laughs> she said to me, she met a few members at some church. Uh, they were just speaking and uh, they were like, uh, we're not going to church this uh, last Sunday of the, of the month. And when she was listening to it, she's like, the pastor will be talking about the rent that needs to be paid. And us, we don't want to give to empower the church. Imagine. And you, 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 you call that being a child of God. Where you don't be. Do you know, I was telling people the other day and I said, 1,000, over 1,500 church buildings were sold. You can't be happy as a child of God to hear that. You can't be happy as a child of God to hear that the church can't feed the homeless. You can't be happy as a child of God to hear that the church doors are shut. A true child of God will empower the work of the gospel, whether it takes by effort, whether it is by praying, whether it is by giving, whether it is a true child of God will empower the work of God. But a false child of God will never see value in anything that is of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Every individual that was watching today, 
I pray for them. And I ask, oh God, establish the source of truthfulness in their lives. Help them to become people of honesty and integrity and not liars, not swindlers, not people of falsehood, but people of honesty and integrity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. And this is amen and amen from me. See you tomorrow at 6.30 where we'll be basking in the spirit of prayer. God bless you and have a blessed evening. And those of you who are in a different country, have a blessed morning in Jesus' name.